Today in Minecraft, I survive 100 days as the Avatar. I'll be attempting to master all four elements. We surrounded the Avatar mod with the ultimate adventure mod pack. From bending to dragons to epic dungeons to take on, my goal is to learn every bending ability and become just as strong as Aang. I have plenty of side goals along the way, like visiting major cities from the Avatar universe, bossing say, and maybe even the Fire Nation capital. I want to tame an air bison, slay a tier 5 dragon, and so much more. Join me in this epic saga of transforming from a newbie airbender into a master avatar. Also, if you could only become one type of bending, what would it be? Comment down below and enjoy the most important video in the history of my channel. So I spawned in my world and instantly saw some air bison, but I wasn't ready to tame them. I don't know any bending abilities just yet, so I have to do normal Minecraft tasks, and that's cutting down a tree and getting some wood. The first thing I needed to craft is a wooden sword. I'll show you why in a second. So I believe the easiest bending ability to learn is air bending. So on screen, you can see all the mobs that drop air bending scrolls. I have to get three air bending scrolls to learn air bending. And chickens, I believe, were the easiest. So I went around slaughtering them all until I got my first scroll. Then I just needed two more. And I've been getting pretty lucky. This one tried to run away from me, but I didn't let him. So after I got all three scrolls, I unlocked air bending and I could see all the abilities I can learn. The first one I wanted to learn was air jump. This ability will help me travel the world, but I needed one more scroll. I got pretty unlucky with the rest of the chickens, so I had to start killing the baby ones. Sorry, but it was worth it. And there I go, unlocking air jump and learning my first bending ability ever. And obviously, I had to give it a test run. So we were just cruising around the map. As I was training air jump, I noticed this castle. And then they started shooting ballistas at me. So I wanted to fight them and get some payback. But I don't think I was too equipped. I dodged them and tried to outflank them. And soon realized I was way outnumbered. And if I wanted to take them on, I needed to be much stronger. So the first day was coming to a close. And I noticed I didn't have any resources, really. I only learned bending. So I killed a few sheep to make myself a bed. After crafting myself a bed, I just needed to make a door and a little hobbit hole to live in. Just enough to protect myself from any firebenders or evil monsters. Placed down my bed and slept through the first night. And just like that, we're on day number two. So on day number two, I made it my mission to get some stone tools and get a little bit more established. I also wanted to work on getting air jump to level two so I can jump even further. Along with getting a better base because living in a hobbit hole just isn't right. There we go, I got all my stone tools, and then it was time to make a stone sword to help with my chicken killing addiction. As I began to get some resources for my base, I just started thinking about all the abilities I'm able to learn, and my head just started racing out of excitement. So as I was traveling the world, I made sure to use air jump, because you not only have to learn the ability, but you have to train it, because it can get even stronger, up to tier four. I was exploring where I wanted to build my base, and then these mummies appeared, and I wanted to kill a few and see if they dropped any types of scrolls. Sadly, I wasted my time, and they didn't drop any scrolls. After using air jump for so long, I finally reached level 2. Not only did I have to reach level 2, but I had to unlock level 2. So how you do that is by having two tier 1 airbending scrolls and combining them to make a tier 2. Once I had tier 2, I was then able to put it in there and unlock it. Now I should be able to jump a little bit further and faster. So I decided to just build where that hobbit hole was. It was enough messing around and it's time to clear a spot for this house. There we go, that should do. Now night is coming pretty quickly, so it's time to build really, really fast. Phew, that one we cut pretty close. And I realized I had no torches and the backside was not done and zombies can get in. I heard a zombie too. I couldn't sleep. That zombie was nearby. I wondered if he was inside this cave, but I couldn't find him anywhere. So I picked up my bed and thought about sleeping in the corner. Thankfully it worked and day three was here. On day number five, I decided to go back to the spawn where those air bison were and try to tame them. I brought an apple, but I couldn't get their attention and then I heard it. A dragon roar! 
Over by that mountain, there was a bronze dragon. I had to go investigate. As it got closer, I noticed the dragon was stuck. Maybe glitched? And there was a dwarf here. He was probably trying to steal the dragon's gold. I air jumped up to get a closer look, and he was coming right at me. I was not proud of this moment. I did a little oopsie and became fried penguin. I went back to my death point to try to get back my stuff. And the stupid thing was hovering over my death point. And he started coming right towards me. I retreated back to the air bison. But it was too late. The dragon got me again. And I knew my stuff was lost. And that dragon became public enemy number one. While dreaming of my revenge against that dragon, I knew I had to get stronger. And the only way to do that was getting some more chickens. So I began to get some seeds so I could begin breeding a flock. I went and built a chicken coop, and then the only thing I needed was the chickens themselves. I began luring as many chickens as I could. Little did they know their fate was going to be KFC and airbending scrolls. Their children, their children's children, and their children's children's children would all become airbending scrolls. Over the next few days, I began breeding as many chickens as I could. I wanted to kill my chickens, but then I heard this thing in the forest. I didn't know what it was, but it started running right towards me. So I began to fall back. I had to protect my base. It was mean, it was ugly, and oh my god, it had a giant axe. I think we're dealing with a troll. So I got on top of my base, and I tried safe spotting it. I still had no airbending abilities that did damage. Aha! I managed to slay the beast. And I got his axe. A gigantic troll axe. Can airbenders use an axe? Well, I'm using it anyways, and this thing is awesome. I killed the zombie, and it dropped my first ever earthbending scroll. If I get three earthbending scrolls, that means I can finally learn earthbending. I saw a few endermen and zombies and decided, let's go to bed tonight. Early night's rest, never hurt anybody. On the morning of day nine, I woke up and chose violence. I decided to kill all my chickens, or most of them. And then this chicken-loving beast came out of nowhere. I didn't know what she was, but she had to die. I managed to defeat the chicken-loving beast and resume to the great chicken purge. I spared one adult chicken and five babies so they could live on to be reproduced again. After slaughtering all the chickens, I took a look at our hall. I got seven airbending scrolls. Only tier one though. I was ready to upgrade air jump to level three and use one of the scrolls. I wanted to learn air blade as my next ability. So I took two tier one scrolls and made a tier two. Air blade being a tier two ability is going to be a little bit more expensive, but it's my first damaging ability and it was time to test it. Well, maybe not on the chickens. I found an ugly sheep and shot from so far away. I was really surprised it could reach this distance, but it had a long cooldown. The more I level up air blade, the faster I can use it and the stronger its damage will be. This air blade ability made quick work of chickens. It only took two hits to take it down, and I got lucky on that one. Another airbending scroll. I got myself prepped with a tier two scroll just in case if I level up air blade. So I was traveling a little bit practicing air blade, and I found where the mummies were coming from. So to clean up my base, I decided to take it down. I jumped around, tried to mine it, but I was getting overwhelmed. Managed to break the spawner, and I made my way back to the base, hoping they would despawn. The zombies made it back to my base. I was battling them back and forth. And then out of nowhere, these two airbenders, these nomads came out of nowhere and hooked down the zombies for me. They also had some awesome goatees. Look at that! He knocked the zombie all the way into the next biome. I wanted to see if I could trade with them, and I could! I could buy an Acolyte Glider, but it would require a Tier 2 Universal and a Tier 3 Airbending Scroll. There was a lot of awesome things I could trade for, but they seemed to all require Blaze Rods. I had none of them. I was pretty nervous having these Airbenders around. If I accidentally hit them, they would turn on me using their master abilities. So I decided to uh, store them for a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm just storing this last one in hopes that I find some Blaze Rods and can trade with them later. This guy's ability didn't go away, and I had to murder him. It was a bad idea. Do not attack master level airbenders. They were hitting me through the ground, so I just had to run. I keep running in hopes that they would actually de-aggro on me. 
so I can keep them alive. After getting my butt kicked by those two airbenders, I knew it was time to get some better armor. So I went mining on day 11. I was in search of metal ingots. So after I found my first ore, I wanted to see what they could craft. Tons of different weapons, but I needed to craft something called a metal plate. Metal plates required four metal ingots, and then they have to be dyed afterwards. Each die can craft a different element's armor. The deeper I went, the easier it was to find some metal ingots. Also decided to get some iron while I was there. I even managed to find my very first diamonds. After mining, I made my way back to my base to start crafting. And then I heard a familiar noise. It was another troll! He was attacking my chickens! Oh god, my airbending was not strong enough to take him on! But I used their troll axe against them. Aha! I defeated the beast. But he broke my chest. I couldn't believe he broke my chest. And my seeds literally went everywhere. He dropped troll tusk and troll leather. So you can make that into some troll armor. My chickens were pretty scared, so I fed them some seeds. And I kept breeding them for one more big purge. After my mining trip, I had so many of these metal ingots. I wasn't sure how many I needed because the metal plates required four ingots each. So I ended up with 26. And to make this air nomad armor, I had to dye them with dandelions. But I decided it'd be better to wait till tomorrow. No more trolls for me. Searching for some dandelions, I found a lot of poppies. And this was cool because I could actually make myself a Fire Nation helmet. The air nomad armor doesn't have a helmet. So if I combine the two, I would have the ultimate armor set. I couldn't find any dandelions, so I tried bone milling, and no luck right up the start, but then I started to get some. I also found a dandelion patch behind my house. So I went and collected all those, and soon I would have enough to make my armor set. I went and crafted five red plates so I could make that Fire Nation helmet. Last but not least, I needed some slippers, because Aang didn't walk around in bare feet. I looked pretty strange, but I had over a full row of armor, and it was time to test it. I found one of these beasts. I decided to fight back and give this thing a run for its money. I was using Airblade. <laughs> the thing ran off using a potion to heal back up. I'm getting stronger. A few days later, on day 14, and the chickens were ready. So I began the purge using Airblade, but that was taking too long with the cooldown. So I decided to go with a sword, old-fashioned style. Yes, chickens, die! All of you. I may have went overboard. <laughs> I had so many airbending scrolls. And then I went around picking up all the KFC. With all these scrolls, I'll be an airbending master in no time. Slaughtering those chickens was a lot of work. So Airblade was level three. And now I can cut blocks. I wanted to test it out. And it really didn't work. Uh, let's give it another try. Wait, okay, maybe it can't break wood. It was lying to me. It can't. Oh, it one hits that thing now. The jellies stand no chance. I wanted to check up on the herd of air bison near where I died. The dragon wasn't around. But I noticed this little dungeon. And the chest did something weird. Uh-oh. It spawned in ice wizards. These ice wizards, they started attacking me. Using different spells. They turned me into a slime. What? They began to fight amongst themselves. So that gave me a good advantage. I took down my first wizard and then turned my attention to the other two. I was comboing with my air blade. They kept turning me into the stupid slime. The last wizard was the strongest out of the three. He was using ice freeze and also the slime attack. He was comboing, but he was no match for my axe. I went to loot the chest and got some more gold. There he was, the dragon. I was gonna get vengeance on him, but I wanted to see if I could get my loot back. I air jumped up to where I died. And the dragon wasn't paying attention to me. I tried to get back my loot, but all of it was gone. He probably added it to his dragon horde. The dragon took notice of me, and I had to get the heck out of there. I dodged a few flame attacks and retreated right to the bison. After that battle with the wizards, I noticed my armor was not as durable as I thought it was. I placed my skull down to scare away any enemies. I still was not strong enough to take on that dragon, so I wanted to learn every single airbending ability. And the first one I wanted to learn was Tier 3 Cloudburst. And I learned that a tier 3 scroll was super expensive. It required two diamonds, four bottles of experience, two airbending scrolls, and a book to craft. I had the diamonds, the scrolls, the book, but I didn't have the bottles of experience. I needed to figure out how to get these and fast. I decided to learn Air Gust. It's not the strongest ability, but if I get it to tier 4, it can destroy projectiles that are shot at me. 
So a waterbender or a firebender shooting a projectile, I can hit it right out of the air. I am so close to finishing leveling up air jump. Level four has two paths that you can choose, double jump or ground pound. I need to figure out which one I wanna do. Then for tier four air blade, you can either do dragon claw, which shoots five projectiles, or you can do boomerang or boomerang, I should say, which will return back to you if you hit an enemy successfully. Here's the remaining abilities that I need to learn for airbending. I don't know where this came from, but I found a tier six scroll just searching through my chest. Maybe the chickens dropped it? But I quickly put it on slipstream. This will allow me to go supersonic if I get it up to max level. I thought I was gonna turn into a NASCAR driver, but <laughs> I only went a little bit faster. I've learned some new abilities, but I needed to train them to be even stronger and soon learn my next bending type. Also, this chicken was outside. What was he doing outside? D chicken, no, go home in your cage. Day 20 was a sad day because I realized bottles of experience are way too hard to get and I needed to talk to my airbending friends. I looked online and they actually drop high level scrolls. There's that one, and uh, I couldn't find the other guy. But he was probably doing just fine. So, it was time to kill my master. I began battling him, but he was very, very strong. Throwing every airbending ability I knew out. He was using cloud burst. He was using air gust to push me back. I had to rethink my strategy. So I began to make a roof, and I wanted to box myself in. That way, he could not push me back. The airbenders are very defensive. So I got down on his level and started comboing with a sword and air blade. And then he died and dropped a tier five scroll. This tier five scroll, I was gonna use right away. I felt bad about killing my master, but it was a necessity. He knew information he would not teach me. Once I got the taste of airbender blood, I had to kill more. I had a thirst for knowledge. So I made it my mission for the day to go find some more airbenders and well, slaughter them. After a short while, I found my first two victims. These airbenders weren't going to suspect a thing. I air jumped over to them and began meleeing and air gusting at the same time. They were definitely giving me a run for my money. I was hoping to get them aggroed on each other, but that did not work. I was using every airbending ability I knew to try and take them down. They were definitely trained well. I jumped down on them and they air gusted me away to keep me back. No drop from the first guy. I kept pursuing the second one. I needed to get a drop from him or it wouldn't be worth it. I air jumped and comboed with my sword and out came a tier four airbending scroll. I knew right away I was gonna learn air burst. So I wanted to test out air burst, but then this bison was freaking out. Oh, okay, I guess he's fine. <laughs> what was wrong with him? So I found my first female airbender and I showed her no mercy. I made quick work of her and took her down. And out came another scroll. I managed to collect a good few airbending scrolls. This dragon has no idea who he's messing with. Before night fell, I wanted to kill one more. And then out came a tier seven airbending scroll. I've never seen one of those before. And then it took an elytra to craft. That's insane. On the way back to my base, I found this evil minotaur with crazy red eyes. This minotaur might be stronger than that troll. He was already difficult enough and then mobs started coming out and helping him. So I got the high ground and tried safe spotting him. And turns out he's really smart. He got up on top of the tree and he was trying to take me off. The one good thing about this, I'm getting a ton of earth bending scrolls. My health started getting low and I was low on hunger too. So I retreated back to my base and I was pinned. That minotaur was watching my every move. I hit him again and then he started glowing. I realized he couldn't be affected by range attacks anymore. This meant I had to go out and melee him. Finally, the minotaur's down. His loot was not good at all. It was totally a waste of my time. For some reason, the zombie and skeleton were having a party in the chicken pen. So I took them down and got some universal scrolls. That makes it four universal scrolls and one of them is tier two. This can be used on any type of bending, even lightning. I was mining for some more gold so I could make some golden apples for the battle against the dragon. Then I heard a zombie and I made my way to a mine shaft. This was an awesome stop. I got some more apples. I got a fire resistance potion. I knew exactly what I was using it for. That dragon's going down. One thing on my dragon checklist was to get a shield. So I thought, why not get a Kyoshi warrior shield? It required me making the war fan. So I made that and then it was time to make the shield. I also wanted to make a war fan weapon. It 
kind of looked funny when I had them both equipped. I didn't know the war fan was dual wielding. I just needed a few more golden apples and I think I was ready. I had an apple tree right next to the base. And from my mining trip, I got a few more gold ingots. So we should have a few of them. <sighs> we accomplished a lot today. I earned a good night's rest. A few more upgrades before we fight that dragon. Air Gust was ready for level 2. And then Air Jump was ready for level 4. I decided on double jump instead of ground pound. So it only took a tier 2 scroll and it was ready to go. Air Blade was so close for Dragon Claw. It might reach level 4 when we're fighting that dragon. It was time! I had my sights on the dragon. Day 20 was it! I popped my fire resistance potion and my golden apple. And I was ready to get the first shot. Air Blade missed. Wide right. The dragon shot a fireball at me! I tried dodging it. He picked me up! And then he dropped me out of the air! I was running to get repositioned. I stood my ground! Gave no fear to this dragon. The dragon kept trying to use his fire breath. But he soon realized that if he's gonna do any damage against me, it's gonna be on the ground. So he picked me up! He was biting me! That's when I could use War Fan. War fan was pretty formidable. I was comboing it with air blade. The dragon was getting angry. He was starting to get really hurt. I could sense it. I was going nuts, spamming war fan because it had a high attack speed. Air blade was on cooldown for a little bit. I was using double jump to dodge some of his fire breath attacks. If my armor goes down, I don't think I can beat him. I started taking some damage, so I fell back a little bit. It was time to pop another golden apple, but he picked me up in his mouth. Luckily, I can eat while I'm in his mouth. I began to wonder. Is this a huge mistake? Am I even doing damage past the dragon scales? But he tried to fly away, and I assumed he was licking his wounds. He wasn't even attacking me anymore. So I kept it up. War fan like crazy. Airblade once in a while. I knew this was it. The dragon wasn't flying away. I broke one of his wings. I kept going at him. It was almost a matter of time before he perished. And then my vengeance against the dragon was achieved. I did it. My armor took a huge beating. Still six minutes remaining on my fire potion. So I put out all the flames. So I could loot this dragon without the items dropping. I harvested the organs, the bones. And there was the fire dragon heart. And I also claimed prize with the dragon skull. Tier 3 dragon was slain. After a mere 30 days, I took down a tier 3 dragon. All by myself. Throughout my journey, I'm going to be fighting monsters even stronger. But I knew after taking down this dragon, I was ready for whatever came my way. And kids, that's how baby bison are born. After taking my victory against the dragon, Airblade was ready to be maxed out. With Dragon Claw. Five small projectiles being shot straight out in front of me. This is going to do a lot of damage. But it had a long cooldown. So as I got back to my base, I realized I didn't need to live here anymore. I lived here because of the dragon. I mean, there's trolls, minotaurs coming constantly to attack me. I didn't want to deal with that. So I crafted a few backpacks and I stored everything I've ever owned. I got the last of my stuff and I decided to burn the place down. Have a little fun at least. I began burning down the base. I left the Cody head because I didn't need it anymore. But 32 days of living here. And it was gone. I also killed the last remaining chicken. Not because I needed to, but you guessed it, because I wanted to. And I also left all the low-level air banning scrolls, because they serve no use for me anymore. I was getting stronger. Not a master yet, but soon. I told myself not to look, but I took one last peek at my base. It really went up quickly. I was kind of surprised. I really picked a crappy time to become a nomad and burn down my house. I probably should have waited till the morning. But at least I made it to the air bison. Maybe I can just ride one of them. So I air jumped up to the bison and I wanted to go and feed him. I was very careful. He wasn't taking my food. And then he got comfortable enough to start eating. And a banshee came out of nowhere. This banshee. It phased through blocks. It, it did. It did. So I was careful, trying to be careful, not to air blade the bison, but I accidentally did. Hopefully he's not mad. I killed that banshee and made my way back up to the bison and began feeding him again. Thankfully he wasn't mad at me. Man, this thing can eat. Jeez, this fatso can put it away. After a stack of wheat, he still wasn't tamed. He needs to have smoke appear above his head. Uh, then the mob started coming out. Great. I air jumped up to him, trying to feed him some more wheat. 
And I think I saw some smoke. And then I used the apple to tame him. And it worked. Oh, but then this creeper was trying to kill us. So I took him down and all the other monsters. The air bison actually helped me. This is true friendship in the making. Then the air bison was saying goodbye to his wife. I think he was, or he was fighting. He knew he never was gonna see her again. This silly bison was not listening to me. So I needed to craft something very expensive called a bison whistle. This will allow me to call him whenever I want. He was very high up and I needed to bind it with him. So I tried jumping as high as I could and then shift right click. I actually got it. First try, too. I can tell him to stop following or start following. He still wasn't listening the best, though. Finally, I got him to listen. And I realized I may have tamed the derpiest one. I put his saddle on him, and it was time to ride. But he put me in his mouth. I don't know where I went. Where am I? Oh, there I am. We're going to have to work on this. So being inside the beast, it was kind of hard to steer it. I slowly began figuring it all out, though. If you look down, he starts going down. And then if you look up, he starts flying. As day 35 began to come to a close, I knew we had to go somewhere special. And I heard rumblings about Ba Sing Se being nearby. So I headed east in hopes to find it. Well, it's day number 45, and you're probably wondering how I got here. Well, for the next 10 days, me and Fluffy, we traveled far, looking for this desert. Me and the bison went to the peaks of a snowy mountain where we found a wizard that was not too nice. So he took a quick slip out of the top of his tower. We saw so many crazy things just flying around the world. This giant statue, another black fire dragon, and this weird one-eyed cyclops creature. He did not like when I started killing his sheep. Finally though, after traveling through the magical forest, we found the desert. This is where Ba Sing Se would be. When I made it to the desert, everything wasn't too nice to me. That black fire dragon chased us down again. Looking for a base to call home so we can find Ba Sing Se. Once we got to the desert, we didn't see Ba Sing Se anywhere. This structure was not generating for us at all. We weren't gonna give up yet. But I took a little break to learn earthbending before I got to Ba Sing Se. I felt it would have been pretty embarrassing not knowing any earthbending if we made it to Ba Sing Se. So I wanted to learn mine blocks first. Because how cool would it be not to have to use a pickaxe anymore? I could just break blocks by punching them. This turned out to be one of my favorite abilities. I mean, we were just going right through that sandstone, no problem. I couldn't imagine what tier 4 mining would do. I broke through the sandstone and I think I found a fire dragon. And I also leveled up to tier two mining blocks. I cautiously inspected the beast, making sure it wasn't breathing. Nope, it wasn't, so I looted its body. And I got another dragon skull. I mean, I was no toff, but I was starting to get the hang of this earthbending pretty quickly. I was walking over towards Fluffy, and, well, he was laying down. He wasn't feeling too good after that long journey. So I fed him a bunch of apples. And he was good as new. I put him back down so he could rest. This is just a temporary base. Don't judge it, okay? I just wanted to live here for a little bit. So I actually should add some windows. Or why would I use a pickaxe when I can mine blocks? Okay, it kind of breaks more blocks than I want, but I can just replace them easy enough. Next in my earth bending training, I was going to learn earth control. So this would allow me to pick up any block that was made of earth. Stone, sand, sandstone, and then... I realized I could throw it. I needed to be a little careful if I threw the block at the wrong mob. But these zebras, I could kind of bully a little bit. It doesn't do a crazy amount of damage because it's just level 1. But imagine getting this thing to tier 4. That'd be a pretty devastating ability. Come here, zebra. I heard you like blocks. Oh god, he does not like blocks. Okay, they were all charging me. I had to use my master level abilities, Air Blade. And it mowed right through them. Airblade is so strong now. I noticed something pretty fun I could do. I could stack the blocks up. I could push them away and then position them exactly where I wanted to. But they could only go about five blocks away. On day 50, I had some great news. 
So I managed to max out my first two earthbending abilities. Earth Control is now Blocky Boomerang, and if I hit a mob, I get it right back, and it does a ton of damage now. And then we got Mind Blocks to Soul of the Badger Mole. Tier 4 for this is so epic because you get Fortune 3 and you can mine so far away. Look at all the resources I managed to get. All those metal ingots from Fortune 3. And the way I was able to level up my abilities so quickly is this spawner. So I found a Minecraft dungeon with a zombie spawner in it. The best way to farm these up is actually using Airblade. I was able to mow them down, but Airblade was already level 4, so I wasn't really training. The zombies drop Universal Scrolls and also Earthbending Scrolls, so maybe one day I can have Lightning Bending. Also, I didn't notice there was a chest in here, and it had a Golden Apple, a Saddle, and also Woven Bison Armor? Fluffy's gonna love that. I was super excited to go see Fluffy. I had to give him his 10 daily apples. He's a big boy, so he eats a lot. But I had the armor so I could put it on him. Woven bison armor. It's not the best, but it should help him in battle. There was three other bison armors that were already better. That legendary bison armor, it looks pretty sweet. But I would have to probably go find it in a dungeon or something. And then they had the majestic bison saddle. I assume that would give me a bigger inventory and help me in my nomad quest but I don't know how to get that stuff right now. Here you go. There's one more apple for you. He's a good boy. He deserves all the apples in the world. Fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. After learning a bit of earthbending, I realized my time here was done, so I collected all my things. Most of them were already in backpacks, and it was time to go look for Boss Sing Se again. I called over Fluffy, and I told him it's time to set back out on our journey. I also managed to work with him so I don't get eaten whenever I try to drive him. It looks much better up here now. Five days of traveling, three deserts, and 32 apples. I was down to my last apple and fluffy. It was not enough for him, so I couldn't fly. He was exhausted, so he set out on foot. There was a few dragons around, so we needed to be pretty careful. I made sure I had my whistle just in case if he wandered off. And just as we were about to give up for the day and set up camp, I saw it. Ba Sing Se. The heart and pride of the Earth Kingdom. Fluffy didn't know how big of a feat this was, but we found a needle in a haystack. It's time to enter into the city. As I got closer to the city, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I realized the puny earthbending abilities I learned would stand no chance against whoever lived here. My plan was just to walk right through. Once I got to the stairs, I thought it'd be best if Fluffy stayed behind. Many people might think he's a beast and try to kill him and eat him. He does look pretty tasty from time to time. It's a lot of fat on him. <laughs> but when I entered into the city, I made sure to take a few blocks with me. Just in case if I encounter some hostiles. But this city. There were so many buildings, towers. This city could house a thousand players. Once I got to the palace, I saw what I thought was an NPC, but realized it was too smart. And... I quickly recognized the person. Hey, hey, Cannibal. Is it, is that you, bud? Oh, hey, no, hey. a fire, whoa, whoa. a firebender, please. I didn't blow up the dragon. I don't even know firebending. I don't know how that happens. Uh, <laughs> I don't know firebending. D dude, you I, I just, a firebender suit? I'm doing a hundred days survival on the server. I'm not here to grief your base or anything like that. Oh, oh, you're not. Wait, you're not that firebender that was here just a second ago? Well, no, I'm doing a 100-day challenge. What are you doing on the server? Are you... Oh, thank God. Listen, living in Bossing say? Well, I figured, you know, I kind of want to be like a tank in real life, so I wanted to become an earthbender, and you're only doing 100 days? I'm on my 746th day here. I'm doing a 1,000-day channel. What? Ah, puny 100 days. 1,000 <laughs> days in the Avatar world? Earth smash! Did you only learn earthbending? Oh yeah, 100%. Dude, 1,000 days of earthbending? How yeah. invulnerable can I become? My skin will become sandstone! Nobody's gonna wanna just learn and watch you play earthbending. I mean, earthbending's cool, but watch this. Uh, what do you mean? Dude, there's a whole underground society that loves earthbending. Airbending! Ow! See? It's the greatest thing in the entire world. Don't just learn Earth pending. I, is it though? Like, can you fly? Well, not yet. But I'm trying to, and I can go super fast. This is my slipstream tier four ability. It's like I'm warping into a new dimension. 
Dude, what is the point of going fast when you you can't even go down into the stone? Imagine digging. Digging is way better than flying. Well, I mean, I can do that too. Uh, but can you do it as fast as me? No! I hit a water pool. Oh, you gotta get you gotta get out of there. Oh god, you're drowning. <laughs> so we went and explored the palace just a little bit, and I wanted to get some more information from Cannibal as to who this other player on the server was. Cannibal. You gotta tell me, what were you blabbering about? A dragon and somebody firebending you? I, I don't know firebending, so that wasn't me. Was, was there another player? I don't know if someone's trolling me or not, but someone knows firebending. And if it's not you, then it's it's gotta be another player on the server then, Cody. All right, man. Well, you, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, He had a dragon tamed, you said? Ah... <sighs> Yeah, so he thinks I killed his dragon. I don't know what the heck he's talking about. He just come up and my bossing say I'm the I'm the king here, by the way. You're the king in bossing say. Oh yeah, I mean there was no one here. It's like a, a pre-generated thing, so I was like, I'm the king. Okay, <laughs> sure. As long as we can be allies, then uh, I'm mm. okay with you being the king here. Come see me when you hit 500 days. <laughs> Dude, all right, all right. <laughs> Hey, uh, I did notice you had uh, an extra set of Earth Kingdom gear. Can I be an honorary Earth Kingdom soldier? Guys, look oh. at I do know some Earth bending. Why don't we have a little bit of a one v one? Um, are you sure you want to do that? I mean, you're only on like day what, forty something? Well, I know a couple Earth bending abilities, and soon to be some more. Uh, let's give, let's give it a shot. Uh. All right. Only using earth bending, though. I mean, you're gonna get completely crushed. No pun intended. But I'm just saying. Let's go. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. You know that ability already? What the heck? How That's fast. ravine. <laughs> oh, what a fast learner. All right. What about this one? Whoa! You learned wall. Six hundred days of wall. Another what? wall. What? <laughs> it took you six hundred days one. to learn that. Another one. Oh, what are you talking about? I've been mastering wall. Look how big it is. It's like I can make my own little house out of sand. Wait. Sand smash! Crap. Do you only know wall? <laughs> you, you're just placing blocks. No. No. I... So, you look, I, I can... It's a big wall, though. Like, really big. 800 days worth of wall training. Oh, whoa! Okay. Whoa! You can push you. I didn't know I could do that. Uh, course, dirt. Attack. Where are you, Mr. Crab? <laughs> Where did you? Oh, I made you I put you in a hole. No! Get me out of here! <laughs> Cody, come Sorry, on. I used air bending. I, I air bending. Cody, drop a rope, will you? I can only dig. I can't build. So I kind of took pity on him. He, for some reason, didn't know all of his abilities. But I didn't leave without taking that armor, though. Because I felt I'd want it. So we now have Earth Kingdom armor, along with some air bending gear. So I'd probably put this on with my air bending stuff. We'll have a ton of defense. I called Fluffy, and I told Fluffy it was time to go. But I just, I, Fluffy took forever to come here. There we go. Bossing say it was definitely a cool stop. But I was beginning to get worried about this firebender. Cannibals on the server. Who else could be here? After spending day 61 in Ba Sing Se, it was time to get the heck out of there because Cannibal was kind of crazy and he didn't know many earthbending abilities. So I made my way to this earthbending village and I slowly descended because I hoped to get a few scrolls for them. I want to learn an ability that Cannibal knew though. It was that wall ability. That would be pretty cool to have. I asked the guard nicely if I could enter in. Well, I had to kill that guard. I don't know what possessed him to attack me. And then the citizens, they came out and they wanted to start a fighting match. I was not about to do that, so I airbended her away into oblivion. She actually kind of took a while to die. After that, they accepted me into their village with open arms. I went into their houses and I began taking a look if I needed anything. We had some more wheat. I think Fluffy will like that. And bottles of experience! Managed to scoop up a few earthbending scrolls, tier 3 and tier 2. I sneezed and somehow the whole village just caught on fire. I didn't know what happened. The fire just spread crazy and I, I couldn't stop it at all. Even Fluffy was helping me put it out. After I saved the village, me and Fluffy, we skedaddled on out of there. The wall ability was tier 3, so I needed to have a lot of tier 3 scrolls if I wanted to get this thing maxed out. But now, I can build a freaking wall. 
How cool is this? I tried out a few combos using wall and then earth control afterwards. Nice. This little piggy went to the Fire Nation. And this little piggy went to the Earth Kingdom. On day number 68, I began to take a look at my work. I gave up the nomad life and settled down here in this little savanna. I managed to fatten up Fluffy. Ten apples a day keeps the krakens away. That's what our mom used to always say. Me and Fluffy are related. I really like how this house came out. It's got an Earth Kingdom vibe and is definitely better than the first one. So I took account for how many scrolls I did have. Seven universal scrolls. That is pretty crazy. And I do have a few high tiered scrolls for earthbending and also airbending. I'm also excited to show you guys this. Take a look. I have level three wall. I can build the biggest walls. I am wall. Wall is me. This kind of helped me build my base. <laughs> Wall is such a useful defensive ability. If I box myself in, I can regen a little bit and then airbend right out. It does leave quite a mess though. I haven't completely mastered airbending. There's an ability called Airburst that I want to max out. Currently, it's at level 3. If I get level 4, I can turn the thing into a sniper beam. It's going to do a ton of damage. I did need to do some final touches to my base though. And I had to add the dragon skulls right to the porch. It really brings it in together. I got one from killing a dragon, and then one I found. And those skulls should probably scare some noobs away. Another sweet ability I need to learn is Air Bubble. This ability is so awesome for combat. So if things are attacking me with projectiles, I simply use Air Bubble, and it blocks them all. This poor skeleton stood no chance. Now if I get this ability higher, I can actually burst out the bubble doing some damage. As I was training air bending, that freaking tree caught on fire. I had to go put it out. I thought maybe that dragon made a pass? But I thought it would attack me if it came that close and has been very passive. I wish I knew water bending right now, but at least I had air gusts which helped me put it out. That stupid other tree caught on fire. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Everything caught on fire really quickly. It was a freaking forest fire out here. Every tree was catching on fire and it was making its way to my base. So I started using air gusts and it helped a little bit, but I just couldn't air bend fast enough. I had cooldowns and everything. And then my hunger started depleting because I've been using too many abilities. I had to go back to the base to get some more food. I couldn't eat Fluffy's apples. And then I saw him. Firebender. He threw fire arc at me, setting my house and me on fire. I fell back. I tried to take the fight away from my house. He was burning everything. This guy was griefing everything. I tried to attack him, but then I noticed my base was on fire. I would lose all my stuff if I didn't put it out. But he was doing something over there. He, he started attacking Fluffy. And he started setting him on fire. He was using some sort of flamethrower attack. I tried hitting him and getting his attention on me, but I got caught on fire. I had to retreat. And then he went back for Fluffy. I had to put Fluffy out. How my hunger was depleting really quickly. Fluffy, come on, buddy, it's okay. I pushed Fluffy away, and then I started battling him as much as I could. I used some earth bending. I came from a top, then he pushed me away. I was almost dead. I air jumped back up into the fight. I couldn't find out where they were, and then I saw Fluffy in the corner of my eye. Fluffy was on fire, and then he died. I took out my anger on him. I used all the abilities I knew, trying everything I could to do to kill it. I, I just couldn't focus. I was throwing abilities left and right, wasting my energy. I hopped down to him. I tried ravening. He was using fire arc non-stop, hitting me point blank. And then he killed me. I sat here for a while. And then I saw the name. Kraken Kid. My own brother killed me. I then made it my life's mission to take him down and bring justice for Fluffy. It took me two days to get back to my death point. And all my stuff was here. What, what type of monster would grief and kill and not loot anything? I went to go check up on my house. It was all completely destroyed. I went to go check my chest. Everything still in there. I, I couldn't figure it out. Why would he do that and not take this? The more I sat there and wondered why this happened, the more confused I began. Who would kill someone's pet for fun? I had nowhere to go. So I had to sleep in my destroyed base for day number 71. Cooler heads prevailed in the morning. And I remember there was a dungeon nearby that I could take on. And there was a legendary weapon I could get if I defeated it. That dungeon right there has a Gorgon known as Medusa. If you kill her, you get her head and it turns anyone to stone. That'd be a fitting death to a bison killer. So I went to the dungeon without too much of a plan. I did bring a flint and steel just in case if I could set it on fire but I knew I could not look directly at it 
or I would turn to stone and die. There was three levers I had to pull in order to unlock the stairs down below. I took it very slow because one mistake and I instantly died. I could hear the beast nearby, but I couldn't see her. She was a serpent, a slippery beast. And then I saw her. I froze, my heart pounding. She was in the corner of my eye. I tried luring her to fire. I hid behind this pillar. She was too smart for that. Then I remembered I had Airblade. I could use Airblade without directly looking at her, but it wasn't connecting and hitting. I had her in a corner. I thought I could still set her on fire, even though she was a very smart being. It didn't work. Placed down some more fire, air bladed, and she teleported and caught on fire, and she died. I then claimed my prize, a legendary weapon. If I wanted to, I could turn anyone or anything instantly to stone. After slaying the beast, I made my way back to my base, and then I saw a sign. Losing someone you care about hurts, don't it? Sign Kraken. I was so confused. I couldn't understand why he thought I was the one that hurt someone he loves. I walked out to my porch and I noticed something missing. A dragon skull. I then put two and two together. Maybe that was his dragon I killed. I killed that dragon over 40 days ago. If it was his, why was it just roaming around then? I couldn't stay here anymore. So I became a nomad again. I was going to go by foot, but then I saw it. An ostrich horse! I only ever read about those things in books. It's so majestic. And all I need to do to tame it is right click. And then our adventure could begin. I wasn't sure what to call him, but he was definitely a speedy boy. Me and this ostrich horse, we traveled biomes in seconds. We had to go far south to a place that's a little bit chilly to get my vengeance on Kraken. I knew if I wanted to take down Kraken, I needed to master my abilities more. Airbending, I was the best at, but my aim could be a little bit more precise. I found these dungeons and started practicing on them. I also needed to work on getting earthbending involved, comboing it with my airbending. I found a new way to earthbend! Wahoo! I can launch myself up by using a wall. I noticed Airblade was pretty bad up close. It would go right past the enemies, so I comboed it with Air Gust, pushing enemies back, and then using Airblade right after. So, I may have had a little bit too much fun messing with this guy. I sent him to the stratosphere. And then on his way down, I decided just to kill him. And then I did remember, I need to still train Air Burst so it can become a sniper ability. So, I made it to a swamp. And, well, the ostrich, he was being difficult. He does not like water at all. I came up with a big brain idea. I crafted a boat, and then I wanted to take the ostrich with me. Well, I caught the ostrich in. And then I right clicked and well, I, I mounted the ostrich. Me and the ostrich, we figured it all out. But then I saw this island in the middle of the swamp. I had to go investigate. And then I saw an egg. I checked the chest all around, got some airbending scrolls and woven ostrich armor. That's gonna come in handy along with that water skin. I wasn't sure how to pick this egg up, but I just gave it a shot and punched it. And I picked it up. It was a water dragon egg. I knew this must mean we're close to the Southern Water Tribe. So me and the ostrich, we got in the boat and rode for the night. So me and this ostrich, we spent a lot of quality time in this boat together. So I had time to think of how to eat him. No, I'm just kidding. I figured out his name. It's gonna be Sea Triscuit. I was too busy messing around to notice. But I found my home. An air temple. I wondered if there was airbenders there. I'm probably not gonna tell them that I killed a few airbenders. They wouldn't like that news. I got out of the boat, and I decided to leave Sea Triscuit behind. He's quite strange and very smelly, so I didn't want to offend the locals. So as I was traveling up the mountain, the air bison spawned in. They probably could smell the apples in my backpack, but I could barely hold apples without thinking and crying about Fluffy. I, I made it up to the top, and there was airbenders everywhere, and these lemurs. Flying lemurs? I wonder how I could tame them. Hey, that actually looks like Momo. Aang would be happy to see him. I kind of wanted to tame him, so I tried using an apple, and it actually worked. I tried picking him up. Shift right click did it, so he was on my shoulder. And I wondered about the one behind me. That was a little different. It was a gray lemur. Could this be a female lemur? Well, they love apples too, so I have two of them. 
and I wanted to try to airbend with them on my shoulders. It actually flipping worked. I didn't think it would. So I just looked around at this air temple. It was so beautiful. And then I noticed something happening up at the courtyard. A bison was dying. It was stuck in the wall. I tried airbending him out. It didn't really work. So then I thought I would have to put him out of his misery and airblade him. But one airblade attack actually popped him out of there. Calm down there, big guy. I uh, wasn't trying to hurt you. Here, take some apples. You remind me of my friend. I decided to do a little more exploring around the air temple. And this place was crawling with airbenders. I was looking for an Aang NPC and thought maybe he'd be meditating at the top. So I went to go see. I walked right in the front of the temple. And to my surprise, nobody was here. No NPCs at all. But they did have a great view of the ocean. Uh, then I saw it. Firebending. I thought it could be Kraken. I thought he was here to tear down the air temple. But that actually looked a little different. Was it a different player? I scouted from above, and then he started making his way to the courtyard, and I had to stop him. Once I got a little closer, I realized it was just an NPC. So I thought I could make quick work of him, but he was actually setting everything on fire. No more messing around. I started getting flashbacks of what happened to Fluffy. I jumped over the flames, used earthbending, and then I used air blade to knock them down the cliff. Boom goes the dynamite. Oh, there's Sea Triscuit. He's gonna have some new friends to hang out with. I went around helping the airbenders extinguish all the flames. It didn't get too bad, but I decided it would be best if I leave. Everywhere I go turns to flame. At day's end, me and my three friends, we got in the boat and sailed south in hopes of finding the Southern Water Tribe to begin my water bending. Dark! Got him. Over the next six days leading up to me finding the Southern Water Tribe, I did some pretty cool stuff. I found this pirate ship and I managed to take down the captain and the crew. They tried taking down my lemurs, but I would not let them. And I actually realized my lemurs could fend for themselves. They were kicking butt out there. After I took them all down, I was able to loot the chest and get my first water scroll. During those six days, I also managed to find these nasties. Sirens, they call them. They look like mermaids, but they want to suck your soul. The best strategy I found was actually going underwater and shooting above. After killing those sirens, we worked up an appetite. So I wanted to go to land and get a few apples for my lemurs and myself. And then I saw water horses. Dude, these things are so awesome. I wanted to go swim with them, so I jumped right in. I wanted to tame one so bad. Luckily, I did have a saddle with me. I also needed one more thing, kelp to tame them. So I couldn't decide which one I wanted to tame. And then I saw this guy. He was so cool. He was green and blue. After eating all my kelp, he actually was tamed and I could put the saddle on him. He was so fast. This is the fastest pet I've ever had. He went supersonic in the water. So I had to make a hard choice. It's either the seahorse or sea triscuit. Sea triscuit, he didn't like the water. So I thought it'd be best if he lived out on this island. I was about to leave and then I realized I'm missing my stupid lemur. Where did he wander off to? There he was. He had 14 apples on him. I, I can't be too mad because he was collecting for me. Uh, okay. So I parked my hippogriff on land hoping he wouldn't run away. But he apparently was jealous of land horses. <laughs> he was not quick outside the water. But then he was cruising. We'd be at the Southern Water Tribe in no time, I hope. So I found a sea serpent. This was the last cool thing to happen to me before finding the Southern Water Tribe. So I was airbending underwater in moving water. So technically that's water bending, right? <laughs> he started doing something pretty weird though. I was getting absolutely destroyed and I had to go supersonic and dip. So on day 80, after my six day adventure from the air temple, I found it. The Southern Water Tribe. I got off my hippogriff and told him to go have some fun. And we got on the docks. I let my lemurs go and adventure wherever they wanted to be. Gave them a few apples on the way though. Would you look at that? The Southern Water Tribe having a standing army. You love to see it. This place was pretty chill. Pun intended. <laughs> so I made my way over to the front gates and they had a few standing guards. Hopefully they will let me in. I'm a nice guy, right? Airbenders are cool. But I did have a Fire Nation mask on. All right, I promised myself I wouldn't kill any of the waterbenders so the NPCs were safe. 
but I was still gonna loot their houses. And I found a few more water bending scrolls. So I took that and I wanted to figure out what this water skin can do. I went over to this pool of water and then I right clicked the water skin and it filled up. So with this water satchel, if I'm in the middle of the desert in the Earth Kingdom, I can still water bend until it runs out though. I walked right into their temple and there it was, a fountain of spirit water. And I knew this was gonna be the place I learned water bending. That would give me three bending abilities. Earth, air, and then water. I told myself though, I would never learn fire bending. It kills. Then I used my first water bending scroll and I learned water bending. There were so many cool abilities, I didn't know which one to learn first. I mean, you got water arc, water bubble. Look at this one, you can make a giant wave. Holy smokes. Uh, this is definitely the coolest one, water blast. It looks like Airstream, like a snipe, but for water. I was wondering if I could use Air Burst and also Water Blast at the same time for like the ultimate headshot kill, that'd be cool. I decided to keep it simple and learn Water Arc for my first water bending ability. I harnessed the water from the snow block and it was just so awesome. Holding the water and being able to move it, it didn't go far though. I assume once I trained it up a little bit more, it'd be able to go miles. I was able to rapid fire it from the snow. I could carry the water arc everywhere I went. I found my first victim and I unloaded the water arc, but it didn't kill it. It took two hits, which is pretty reasonable. I thought I'd go up against a more formidable foe. This walrus had it coming. That, that was a miss, okay, it's kind of hard to aim. I tried rapid firing. This thing was freaking awesome. There was water all around me. I was also comboing with gust and then I tried air blade. Look at this one. I hit three enemies at once. So I wanted to try something. I wanted to gather multiple water arcs at the same time, but it kept disappearing. Maybe when it's higher level. Water arc was pretty simple to master. So then I wanted to try water bubble. Okay, uh, this one was pretty silly. <laughs> it definitely wasn't the coolest ability out there. It was just like a glorified way of giving somebody a bubble bath. <laughs> I was messing around with water arc and then this stupid penguin, it came up and walked right in the water arc. It took a bit of damage and I wanted to make sure it was okay. He was running around like a chicken with his head cut off. He just didn't know what to do. I was sorry, buddy. I didn't want to hurt you, but you kind of walked into it yourself. And then I saw the flock of penguins and I wanted to see something. <laughs> it actually worked. Oh my God, just like Aang, I could freaking penguin sled. So I wanted to challenge this penguin to a penguin sledding contest. And we started cruising. I guess he had a little course set up. He was much faster than me. <laughs> so I tried air jumping just to cheat a little bit and catch up, but it didn't work. Imagine air jumping with a penguin. That'd be hilarious. Also, I decided to take off my Fire Nation helmet so I wouldn't scare the uh, waterbenders. Me and the penguin, we went all throughout the water tribe. They were all staring at us, but hey, we were having fun, right? And then he won, so I let the other penguin go. He was not happy with me. He's like, Rude. <laughs> there was no way to tame the penguin, and he just waddled all the way home. It was enough messing around. No more child games. I came here for a reason, and that was to get vengeance and learn all the different types of water bending to take down Kraken. This ability is freaking sick. So it's called Water Skate, and it allows me to float on top of the water, and then I realized I could use it on snow. I was able to traverse the frozen tundra in style. The last water bending ability I learned was water blast. This one's gonna be so awesome. It shoots a beam of water taking down its target. And I farmed up on a lot of these squids because they drop water bending scrolls. I leveled up water blast pretty good. You charge up an attack and then you just annihilate your target. Look at that one hit. That's intense. I may or may not have went penguin slaying again. I made my way back to the water tribe and it happened again. It happened again. Flames are all around. I try to keep my cool. I dealt with this many a times. The first few times it was Kraken. And then it was an NPC. So I can deal with an NPC like I did at the air temple. But there was so much damage everywhere. It had to have been a player griefing. The fire's blaze was super hot and the fire spread like crazy. I wasn't able to stop it. Even knowing water bending and air bending, it just kept going. It had to have been Kraken. I was looking all around for him, but I couldn't see anything. I thought maybe he went back to the water. So I got up on a high ground and I saw a flames on the dock. And there he was, a firebender. And I believe it was Kraken. The docks went up quickly. I was airbending, trying to take them down, looking for Kraken where he might be. 
I jumped around and saw him. There's his boat where I left my hippogriff. I couldn't find my hippogriff at all. The boats were all going to blaze the dock. The whole tribe. I brought this upon them. I did this. I brought Kraken to the Southern Water Tribe. If I didn't come here, he wouldn't have burned it down. So I grabbed my two lemurs and water skated and chased after him. We water skated like crazy and we managed to catch up to him. I had a plan though. I needed to stop all the firebenders. So I wasn't going to attack him. I was going to ghost him on land. Watching where he goes, because he must head back to his home base somewhere. We traveled thousands and thousands of blocks, and we made it to this red mesa biome where he went for a little detour. I had to chase after him, so I used water skate, and I didn't want to get too close. Just close enough so I knew where he was going. I spotted him in the bay, and then I noticed that Hippogriff attacked him. <laughs> Even he knows he's a bad dude. So the bay began to open up, and then I saw a stone biome with houses with red roofs surrounded by fire that had to be the fire nation i couldn't be caught so i went on the back side of this mountain to get a closer look there it is <laughs> the fire nation capital he was living here all along i didn't know where he went but then i saw his boat and i assumed he walked up to the palace once i knew that was the fire nation capital i relaxed a little bit i needed to take the last 10 days and train up that was his base, so he was always going to come back there, and I wouldn't lose him. I water skated across the bay and made this my home base. I did it! I mastered a new airbending ability, Air Gus. So I've used this one a ton, and now it's called the Wind Wall. It creates a massive air gust that moves very slowly, blocking all projectiles. So if he's throwing some firebending abilities at me, I'll just use that and block them all. The last airbending ability I wanted to get to level 4 was Air Burst. So now... I'm able to do sniper mode. Oh, he got knocked into the next biome. Day 94 and another ability completely maxed out. We have wall ready to go. If I need to hunker down for a little bit, this is the ability to use. Day 97 and we have ravine maxed out. This ability is devastating. It sends the earthquake at your target, knocking them up. And then there's aftershocks still going minutes after using it. On day 97 and 98, I used those days to get some resources. I wanted to craft some golden apples for that big fight. <sighs> On the morning of day 99, I knew this was the day I was going to end my 100 days and complete all my challenges. I was going to go over to the Fire Nation disguised looking just like them. So I water skated over and got myself mentally ready for the big fight. I couldn't water skate in. I needed to blend in just like Kraken did. I took a boat and followed the same path he came in on. At this point, my heart was racing. None of the firebenders noticed me. They weren't giving away my position. That guy looked right at me, and I noticed that guard over there. But nobody thought I was a threat. They thought I was just a guard, so I kept going. Walking right by all the NPCs, we had a clear path right to the palace. I thought my sneak plan would have gone up in flames by now. As I approached this guard, my heart beating out of my chest... I thought I was going to get noticed right away. Guards right and left and right allowed me to go in. And there he was, sitting in the palace throne. The master firebender Kraken. It looked like he wanted to talk, but I wasn't here to talk. My plan was unfolding. I made a wall so he couldn't get reinforcements. Then he tried firebending me, and he set his palace on fire. I knew I needed to take down his guards. He was trying to make an escape out there. Everything started burning down. That wall was holding, though. No! No, my plan! It wasn't working. I air bended up. I didn't have any water with me, so I went and grabbed some. I got water arc. Kind of scared him a little bit. He shot a flame blast at me, and it didn't work. It totally got extinguished. Just missed with that. I've done a ton of damage. I used air blade. He set some of his civilians on fire. He began throwing abilities at me, so I used air gust and extinguished them. But he kept a rapid fire of his moves up. So then I thought, let's try a little earth bending ravine to do a ton of damage. I was hiding up on top of the buildings. And then I jumped down with an earthquake. It knocked his armor off. He was running scared. He got on a dragon. I tried knocking him off the dragon. It didn't work. With no armor, he knew he was in trouble. I kept pursuing. His dragon wasn't flying fast enough. I think I may have, may have damaged one of its wings. When I got to the other side, I, 
couldn't see him. They must have been hiding somewhere. I searched all around. My plane, it, I worked 100 days for this. It couldn't fail. I had to get my revenge and figure out why he attacked me and why he killed my Fluffy. He needed to pay with blood for that. I couldn't find him anywhere. I looked every which way and I saw no dragon and no kraken. He abandoned the Fire Nation capital. And I think I failed my last goal for this hundred days. I spent all night looking for some secret base that he might have had nearby. I couldn't find anything. In my hundred days, finally, I come to a close. If you want to see a 200 days challenge, you need to hit that like button. We need to hit 10,000 likes and I will get revenge on that evil firebender. And I may need to learn firebending myself to set him aflame just like he did Fluffy. And then I will be a true avatar.